Um, good afternoon. I'm still under the impression of all the amazing stories I heard, and I wonder about all the not spoken amazing stories that are sitting in this room, so I have to take a moment to get back into my own story. Um, before I do that, I would also like to thank God for my grandmother and for my children for giving me the opportunity to be the mother I didn't have. And for my grandmother for being the one point of love that made me able to love throughout my entire life. And I'm 65 years now, so it lasted very long. I was born in Germany as, after World War II as the daughter of um, a well-to-do German mother and a refugee father from Czechoslovakia. They had a very bad marriage, and the reason why they had to get married was me. <laughs> and I was a huge disappointment to my mom. She actually considered me to be a punishment of God because I was born with a scoliosis, I'm sorry, I didn't plan to cry here, but. Um, so I, she predicted to me that nobody would ever love me and that I would never amount to anything, and I lived her story until I met my husband, probably at age 27, uh, yeah, 26, and this was right after I tried for the second time to take my life, and I just wanted to read the world of me. And uh, talking about turning points, my husband was my first oh, crossroad, was my first crossroad, because for the first time in my life, other than with my grandmother, who I thought she has no choice, and her granddaughter, someone really loved me enough to ask me to marry him. And um, with him, I went to Brazil, where I had my first two daughters. And uh, then we went back to, um, we went back to Austria. Um, by the way, I had moved, by the time I came to Pittsburgh in 1985, I had moved 22 times. 11 times until I finished high school. I had no friends. I don't even recall any names of teachers or classmates. I was not allowed to socialize with them. And I was just in a very weird world where I was explained that everybody in that world, which was my mother, my father, my brother, and my sister, are normal, and the only abnormal person was me because I believed in good and in love and I believed in big things, but I was very thoroughly told that those things don't exist. So my, uh, a big crossroad happened when I came to America. Um, and I didn't want to come to America for some reason, but I came here and um, we bought the house of a very nice lady from Texas. And um, one day, uh, she moved out of the house, of course, and we stayed in touch. And one day, she called uh, to tell me that she loves me. And I said, how dare you tell you love me? You don't even know me. And she said, I can say I love you because our Lord didn't create any garbage, or did he? At that moment, my whole view changed my view of myself, I started to accept myself. When I say started, it's going to be a lifetime, lifelong process. And I started to look at other people, not through the eyes of my merciless mother, but through the eyes of what God probably, possibly or probably intended uh, by creating them just the way they were. And um, so, Sorry, I lost my, uh, so, and uh, then I would like to talk, then another thing came. Um, my mother came to visit one time here, and it was a disaster. And afterwards, I started to go to Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, there I gave myself credit for the first time, because one person spoke up and said that she is abusing her children, but of course, she has no choice because she was an abused child. And I physically went home that night and I patted myself physically on the shoulder and I said, you know what, I love you. 
because you made a choice. You really made a choice to treat your children with respect. And I also came to the awareness, nobody needs to love me in this life, but I want to be treated with respect. And I want to treat every single person that comes across my path with the same respect they I expect from them. <laughs> so a third crossroad I want to talk about real quickly is one day when I was exactly 50 years old, I came home. My husband had made a good living for us for many years, and there was a thing on my front door, and it said that they would turn off the electricity. That when I asked my husband about it, if he forgot to pay the bill, I found out that he had lost his business. And we had no money. I had uh, taken my older two daughters through college, but my little one who's sitting with me here today <laughs> was not through college yet. And I, um, I had visions, I always had an easy time having not so good visions. So I saw myself under a bridge and I knew I didn't want that. And then I thought, what could I do? And uh, I knew I had no money. I knew I had, um, because of my husband's situation, we wouldn't get any credit. And at that time, an opportunity presented itself through my husband, who introduced me to a jewelry maker in Austria. And I went to this lady and started the conversation with the words, I'm really not interested. But, but after, I, um, after I thought about it, I saw that what was a hidden dream throughout my life, it was that I could connect people rather than divide people. And that I could create a world where everybody could live happily with each other and win not at the expense of the other, but together. And somehow, it was an act of a miracle probably, but somehow I started from my kitchen table. I made a big card, I got a big cardboard. Uh, the lady in, in Austria gave me around 100 pieces to take over to America and to try with my friends how they would receive them. And um, so what started this way in a, in a very, very small way, but with a lot of faith. And at that time, by the way, the Longer Burger book came out uh, where he was talking about his life of, uh, of building a business, although he had a speech impediment and all things working against him, I knew I had to make it. It was probably the first time in my life that I dreamt a dream. It was a very short dream, but I was so determined to make it work. Today we are, my company is called Sabika, we are in 43 states all over America. We uh, grew, we have changed lives exactly as I wanted. We have made, uh, I've been able with God's help and my family's help to create a world where true friendships are possible, where people stay because they want to stay where they are their own bosses, where they decide how much they want to give, how much they want to earn, where there's no quota, where they stay because there is a good place to stay. And um, if I can give one advice, advice, I was 50 till I finally dared to dream, and I was 50 till my life that seemed very random to that, up to that point, all of a sudden made sense. So don't give up and don't give up the, the hope for one day being able to dare to dream if you aren't able to dare to dream yet. Thank you. <laughs>